One day you open your Core Web Vitals report and what was green and good and passing evaluation just yesterday, today says failed. And you think to yourself, Well, that's fantastic. Has it ever happened to you? Share in comments. My name is Sabrina Zaidan, I am a WordPress performance engineer. My daily work is to improve performance of WordPress websites. And in this video, I am going to answer the question why Core Web Vitals fail even after they were already good. This is the very first episode of my new series, Site Speed, What the Fuck? Subscribe to my channel if you want to see the next one, because I am already working on it. And if after watching this video, you would want to buy me a coffee, Buy me a coffee. I will leave the link in the description. Cheers. a brand new, nice and clean website that was passing Core Web Vitals assessment before and now it's not. Or, what is more likely, you have an existing old website that you are trying to maintain in good shape and it was passing Core Web Vitals assessment before and now it's not. Or, you had someone like me working on performance optimization of your website and after the work they did it was passing but after some time, it's not. So the question is why the results of Core Web Vitals assessment change from good to need improvement or even poor. To understand this, we need to truly understand what Core Web Vitals is, because we are used to refer to it as LCP, Largest Contentful Paint, CLS, Cumulative Layout Shift, FID, First Input Delay, but this is not what Core Web Vitals are. These are metrics that Google use to evaluate website performance, right? But this is not the nature of Core Web Vitals assessment. Core Web Vitals is Google's evaluation of your user's experience on your website. So, in terms of performance, of course. So, there are immediately three parts of it. Google's evaluation, your visitor's experience, and your website itself. Three parts. None of this is static. None of this is simple. Every part changes all the time. Moreover, every part consists of smaller parts that are constantly changing too. And the first part, of course, is Google's evaluation itself, which consists of the algorithm that is constantly um, developed and updated. Usually the release happens once a month and the nature of this evaluation, which is monitoring, not one-time evaluation, but monitoring. So it's constantly gathering information about everything that happens on your website. Then another part of Core Web Vitals uh, assessment is your user's experience. And their experience is impacted by their internet connection speed, of course, but also their uh, device, their browser operation system, their geographical location, and the content that they have because of that geographical location, either they are locked in or not locked in, and how exactly they interact with your website. I am making a video right now with the prominent examples when changes, changes in users' behavior or in users' groups made enough impact so that Core Web Vitals won't be passing. These are edge cases. This doesn't happen often, but they make some interesting stories. If you want to see that video, subscribe to this channel because I'm working on this video right now. And the third part of Core Web Vitals assessment is the website itself. Uh, and its performance depends on hosting, server, and I'm not talking about the cases when you uh, moved to another hosting or you changed some settings on server. No, um, even if you don't do anything, this is a complicated system that is constantly changing. Uh, software is updated, settings are adjusted, uh, it is changing if you, even if you don't track those changes. And those updates of course, impact the system as a whole. 
The same is true for WordPress core, plugins and themes. Just last month uh, I had a situation where small, small, small change uh, in one of the plugins that was uh, serving navigation menu caused small layout shift but it happened to happen in the menu, in, in the header, so it impacted every single page on the website and that impact was enough for the website to have CLS cumulative layout shift not passing in Core Web Vitals anymore and go directly from good to poor. Again, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of such examples because I'm going to publish that soon. So, back to our list. Um, any third parties involved into delivering content on the website impact is its performance as well. I would say it's about 15% of, of all content in average is, is related somehow or depends on or delivered from the sites uh, that are not this very site, uh, from somewhere outside of the current website. And change is big enough to impact the performance in the way that it won't pass core vitals anymore may happen in that area anywhere and the most fun part is that they are very hard to track because uh, they are not happening on your server they are happening somewhere else the most simple example is uh, ad networks they change something uh, in the way certain formats delivered or certain sizes are displayed and we cannot see exactly what changed because it happens on their servers, but we see the result in performance um, reports and we can at least track the source of this issue and then we go back to the ad. This is uh, the uh, topic for another video, how to solve so such issues. But third parties can cause significant issues on the websites where they are doing something and you of course and by you i don't mean non-developers only website owners content uh, creators content managers administrators editors no developers do things that impact performance in negative way as well Part of my work is teaching performance development teams and I see a lot of confusion among developers in regards of performance too. But this is a normal thing, this is how we learn, we do something, something we see the negative impact of it, we learn how not to do this in the future. By the way, if this all is very new to you and you are looking for the place to start, I would highly recommend to watch the talk of my former colleague from WP Rocket, Lucy Beer, uh, that is called What's Making Our Website Slower? We Are. I will leave the link in the description. As you understand by now, every single part of this system can have enough impact to make Core Web Vitals Assessment fail. But when one part has such a big impact that it can be tracked down, this really are uh, edge cases. It doesn't happen often. Most of the times it won't be one specific issue. It will be the cumulative effect of all listed above. One part changes, it impacts the way it interacts with other parts and they change too. And then this cumulative change reaches the critical point where Core Web Vitals are not passing. By the way, the link to the video where that critical point of Core Web Vitals not passing, I will add this to this video because I, I'm probably recording it while you're watching this one. So if you own or work on the website uh, that used to pass Core Web Vitals assessment before, and now it's not, whether it's a newly built website, uh, it's an old website that is maintained in good shape or it was worked on, on to pass those core web vitals. First thing to know, it's good that it was passing before. It means that 
it has a good record in Google's history of delivering good experience to more than 75% of users. Good experience. Just think about this. We become so obsessed with numbers that we really miss the idea of all this. If it was passing before, it means that majority of users of your website had it loading fast, had it visually stable, and it was interactive for them. Is it normal that it's not passing now? Yes, it can happen, because it is the result of the complex system that is ever-changing. It's not bad, it just means that it needs work to get back to the good place. I want to show you something. This is one of the agencies I'm working with. They have about 200 clients. And those clients' website core web vitals look like this. Important point to understand is that it's not that these websites are magical. It's not that they never fail. Every now and then they will go out of green zone and for different reasons. It can be anything that I mentioned above. But the reason doesn't matter. What matters is that these agencies promise to their client that they will monitor corporate vitals constantly and they will fix issues as soon as they arrive. So small issues don't have chance to become medium-sized issues and medium-sized issues never grow into big issues. And as we investigate and fix these issues quickly, they don't have much time to impact uh, these websites' uh, search results or revenue numbers. If you want to freeze your core web vitals results, it's not gonna happen, no matter how much you want it. But if you monitor performance and you put work when it's required, it's absolutely possible to maintain websites in good shape, in green zone, most of the time. And again, what are good results and where is that critical point of passing versus not passing core web vitals assessment, I'm going to tell in another video that I'm working on right now. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see it. If you watched up until this minute, you probably liked this video. Like it on YouTube, so YouTube will show it to more people like you and me who are interested in WordPress performance. If you are a WordPress developer, send this video to your colleague. Together we can make WordPress websites faster and web a better place. And if you want to buy me a coffee, buy me a coffee. I will leave the link in the description. Bye!